Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on a 2021 Acura RDX. So this is what our trailer hitch is going to look like installed on our RDX here. Now it does stick out from the bumper a little bit, but it has a black powder coated finish that's going to help it blend in with the vehicle. And it's also going to help protect the hitch from rust and corrosion. So adding a trailer hitch to your RDX, it's going to be an excellent option because it's going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can obviously use a trailer hitch for towing, but let's say we wanted to hit the trails or just simply free up some space inside the vehicle for us and the family on those long road trips. We could easily attach either a hitch mounted bike rack or hitch mounted cargo carrier. Our receiver tube size is an industry standard two inch by two inch. This is the larger of the two available options for this vehicle. There's also a smaller one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch, but I definitely recommend going with the two inch because it's gonna give you a much greater variety of those hitch mounted accessories like bike racks and cargo carriers to choose from. Now on the side of our receiver tube, we're gonna have our industry standard five inch, inch diameter hitch pin hole. So that's gonna work great with the industry standard five eighths inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Now keep in mind your hitch pin and clip does not come with the trailer hitch and the reason for that is a lot of your aftermarket accessories like bike racks and cargo carriers are going to come with their own so you shouldn't need to worry about purchasing this separately but if you do need one we have plenty of options here at e-trailer. And then welded to the bottom of the receiver tube we have our safety chain loops. Those are going to work great with both the clevis style hooks as well as the smaller S-type. So if your RDX comes with the hands-free lift gate feature which allows us to just wave our foot under the vehicle to open up your hatch here. So the hitch does cause some sort of problems with that. It doesn't always allow for 100% operation. It can be sort of finicky at times, meaning you have to place your foot on either side of the receiver tube opening. Most of the time it will still work. It's just gonna give you a little bit of trouble and you're gonna have a little bit of learning curve to find the sweet spot. But again, this is gonna vary by application, so it's really just gonna come down to you testing it for yourself. Unfortunately, this is the case for every hitch, so don't go looking for another hitch that's gonna allow this to work better. They're all gonna interfere in some manner. So now we've got a couple measurements for you guys here. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube. You're looking at 14 and a half inches and that's gonna be useful when you're selecting a ball mount so you can make sure you get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. And then we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the start of the bumper here. So it's actually sticking out about a half inch. Therefore, you're not gonna have any issues at all with those folding accessories coming in contact with the vehicle. This hitch also offers plenty of ground clearance, so you, wouldn't, you shouldn't have any concerns with that either. So in regards to installation, this hitch is very easy to install by yourself, even for someone that doesn't have a lot of mechanical experience. It's very basic and simple. It just pretty much bolts onto the vehicle. There's no modifying whatsoever. You don't need a lift and it just mostly requires common hand tools. There is one tool you're gonna need you might not have. That is a torque wrench, but you can actually rent this for free from most local auto parts stores. Now also keep in mind, we will be having the vehicle in the air to show you better what's going on, but you guys don't have to lift it. You can still do this on the ground in your driveway. With that being said, let's go ahead and walk you through each process now. So the first step for installation, we're gonna look underneath our vehicle there, see if we see a spare tire just sort of in this area here behind the bumper. And if we do, we need to go ahead and temporarily remove that. And that's done by opening the hatch. You're gonna be lifting open the floor covering in there. There's gonna be a little plastic tab you'll pop up. And then you should be able to stick a socket down in there to lower the spare tire winch. So again, you can per, uh, temporarily remove the spare tire. Now this particular model doesn't have a spare tire, so we're not gonna be able to show you that today, but if you need any further assistance with that, be sure to reference your owner's manual. The tools are actually located inside the vehicle to do this as well. So next we need to lower our exhaust to get our hitch into position. So first step to doing that is taking some sort of a lubricant and then we're gonna be spraying down each of our four hangers. So there's gonna be one in the front and one on the back on either side. So we're gonna go ahead and get those coated nice and good. That's gonna help remove the hanger from that rubber isolator. Now we need to support our exhaust before we break the hangers free. Easiest way to do that is to take some sort of ratchet strap or cam buckle strap, hook it onto two points on the vehicle, and then pull it tight. If you guys are working on the ground, you could probably use a jack stand or stack a couple blocks of wood. Now we're gonna be using either an exhaust hanger removal tool, which is not likely that you guys have, but you probably do have a pry bar, so we'll show you both methods. The pry bar is probably gonna be a little bit easier on these ones closest to the tailpipe. And then for the one behind our muffler, we'll be using the exhaust hanger tool.
and then we'll just go ahead and do this exact same thing on the other side. Now our exhaust didn't budge as much as I had wanted it to. We can probably still install the hitch just removing those two hangers on either side, but I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room to work and there's gonna be two more located just directly behind this cross member. I'm just gonna go ahead and get those out as well. And again, this isn't required. You guys don't have to do it. I just want some more room to work and some more room for you guys to see. So now we're just about ready to raise our hitch up into position here. We're gonna go ahead and prepare our hardware. We're gonna be getting our M12 hex bolts, two of them per side with our conical teeth washers. We want the teeth facing the hitch side. And our attachment holes are actually gonna be underneath the vehicle here on the inside of the frame. We're gonna go ahead and show you those and then we're gonna test thread our bolt in to make sure we don't need to do any further cleaning. So here's our two attachment holes, the two ones closest to the bumper. We're gonna go ahead and take one of our hex bolts and just make sure we can cleanly thread it into that hole. That's pretty good, no issues there. Now if you wanted to, you could come back with a wire brush and some spray lubricant and clean those out or possibly run a tap through them. It's really just gonna depend on how old your vehicle is and how dirty these holes are. Now with an extra set of hands, we'll go ahead and raise our exhaust up into position. So now with all of our hardware in place, we'll come back with a 19 millimeter socket and snug everything down before we torque it. And now we'll come back with our torque wrench here and torque everything down to the specifications in your instructions. So now that we have our hitch torque down, I'm gonna go ahead and raise our exhaust back up into position along with your spare tire if you have one. And now with everything torqued down, that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver here on a 2021 Acura RDX.